Okay, so we are finishing up our study in Galatians, and we're going to be looking at Galatians chapter 6. And Galatians chapter 6 really begins in um, Galatians chapter 5 at verse 25, because verse 1 in chapter 6 really um, is contrasting or answering um, Galatians 5, 25 through 26. So we're going to back it up and begin with Galatians 5, 25. It says, if we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Let us not become boastful, challenging one another, envying one another. Brethren, if, even if, anyone is caught in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Each one looking to yourself so that you will not be tempted. So with that spirit of gentleness, when he's pulling back up to what he, how he described what the fruits of the spirit were, or the fruit of the spirit being gentleness, self-control, uh, you know, against such things, there is no law. And so then that word restore, I love this word when we looked it up in the Greek, that word, um, it is transliterated as k-a-t-a-r-t-i-z-o i'm not even gonna try to pronounce it but it means fit together compact together prepare i love this perfect for full destination or use i love that so when you see someone who is caught in a trespass when you see a fellow believer who is caught in a temptation or has or is involved in a sin then we are to restore that person with a spirit of gentleness we are to perfect them for their full destination or use it's to rem we're to remind them you were not created for sin you were not saved by the blood of jesus christ to continue in sin. You have a better use. You have a much higher and better destination. So let's work together and let's restore you to this. Um, it also means to bring in to proper condition, to be in good working order, to strengthen, perfect, to complete, to make one what he ought to be. I love this word restore. So how are we to do that? We're to do that with a spirit of gentleness. And we're to do that looking to ourselves. And um, so that we will not be tempted. And some people read that and they think, well, I can't, um, I have to be careful if I'm ministering to this person or if I'm trying to restore this person because I don't want to fall into this sin that I'm trying to pull them out of. And I, that is a, um, a possible way to look at that verse. But another way to look at that verse, which really pulls us back up to um, verse 26 in chapter 5, is let us not become boastful, challenging one another or envying one another. So at the same time if that you're trying to restore someone, we have to be careful that we're not doing that in a spirit of arrogance or um, boastful or, or challenging or, you know, in a way that does not um, honor God. So it's not just falling into this the same sin of temptation that you're trying to help them through. Um, most likely, if you're able to recognize that they're in that sin, then that is not a sin that you struggle with. So that's the reason why you're able to see you should not be struggling with this and you're able to call them out on that because it's not something that you're tempted to do. So that would not be something that you really would have to be concerned with or worry about because it's not a pull on you. But being arrogant and being unkind and not being gentle because you don't struggle with that. Now that could be an issue. That could be something that you would need to be careful to make sure that you're not tempted 
into sin while you're trying to restore someone else who is struggling with something that you don't understand how they could possibly struggle with it. Okay, so that's the way that I see um, Galatians 5.25 through um, Galatians 6.1. And so then verse 2 reads, Bear one another's burdens and thereby fulfill the law of Christ. So bear their burden. It's okay. It's okay to see someone in need and to step in and say, you know what? Um, I'm here to help. I'm here to help you with this, through this. And in doing that, you fulfill the law of Christ. So what is the law of Christ? Well, let's back it up and look at what, you know, what Jesus said. In John chapter 13, verses 34 through 35, Jesus said, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, men will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is how somebody knows that you belong to Jesus Christ. You have love love for one another, not love because someone is doing everything exactly the way that you think it should be done, but you have love for one another, okay, because you are brothers and sisters in Christ. First um, John 5, 1, 3 reads, whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and whoever loves the Father loves the child born of him. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and observe his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. It is not a burden for a believer to demonstrate love to another believer or to another human being period. It's not. Um, we are the ones that are to keep the commands of God. We are not to force commands on people that do not know Jesus. That's, it doesn't work that way. We're to, to love them to Jesus by which they receive the ability and the power through the Holy Spirit to keep God's commandments out of their love for God. Okay. Now James 2, 8 through 12 reads, if however you are fulfilling the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing well. But if you show partiality, you are committing sin. If you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted of by the law as transgressors. Partiality. If you consider someone less than you or not as good as a Christian as you because of um, their economic status, because of their race, because of their gender, because of their traditions, um, whatever it might be, then um, you are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles in one point has become guilty of all. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not commit murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but do commit murder, you've become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are being judged by the law of liberty. You are being judged in Christ as to how well you loved, period. That's it. You're not being judged by how well you kept the law. You will be judged by Jesus Christ by how well you loved him and you loved others. That's what you will stand before him and give account for as a believer. And so um, verse 3 goes on and it says, For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But each one must examine his own work, and then he will have reason for boasting in regard to himself alone, and not in regard to another. For each one will bear his own load. 
you will not stand before God and point to another person and say, oh, look what I did with them. Jesus, you know, reward me with what I did with them. No, <laughs> you will be responsible for you. All right. Everyone has a personal responsibility when they stand before Jesus Christ. He will look at you and he will examine you and he will judge you. You will not have to answer for anyone else, only you. And so, but in that, in that understanding, that's where out of our love, we look to another brother or sister and we know the path that they're on. And you're like, you know that you're going to stand before Jesus for that. Let me help you. Because this is a, this is big, and I don't want you to stand before Jesus and have and this be presented to him. Because I love you too much for you not to be able to stand before him completely blameless, com, you know, com, you know, completely unashamed. So I know that I'm responsible for my own burden, but I also know that I'm here to help carry yours. Not because I get bonus points for that. But just because I want you to stand before Jesus Christ blameless and unashamed. Um, I don't want you to stand before him in, in shame. I want you to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Um, there is a, um, a movie. Uh, there are several movies, actually, that you see this in um, athletics. But um, one of the movies is Safety. It's new on um, Disney. And in that movie, there is a scene to where the young man who um, is the, you know, the focus of the story has gotten caught in his mess. <laughs> and he is having to run sprints for this mess. This is his responsibility. It's his, mercy. it's his mess. It's his burden to bear. But because his teammates love him, they come alongside him and they help carry that burden for him. And it's beautiful. Love it. And um, there's another movie, Coach Carter, and this is a basketball movie. And in this movie, there is a team member who blows up. This is a basketball movie. He blows up and he quits the team because he doesn't want to keep the rules of the coach. Okay, this is the attitude. I'm not keeping these rules. You can't tell me what to do. And he's, you know, he exits the building. All right. But he misses his team. He misses being a part of that family and he comes back. And so the coach is like, okay, I'm glad you're back, but this is what your brothers have been doing. So this is what you've got to do if you want your spot back here in this team, if in this, you know, with this family. And so he takes him up and he's doing what he needs to do, but he starts to get tired. And so his teammates now see that it's this person's responsibility to carry this burden. They're the one that walked away. They're the one that made this decision. They're the one that brought this on themselves. But instead of them looking at him in arrogance and um, being boastful and being like, well, I sure am glad that ain't me, serves you right, or, or whatever it may be, or ignoring it and just being thankful that it ain't them having to do it or whatever, they get on the line and they start taking some of his burden and some of his load and they start carrying it for him. And that just builds the team because this was their love for one another. So beautiful. And this is what this is talking about when God looks at us and he says, love one another, bear one another's burdens. Everyone's responsible for their own load. Okay, but we don't look at someone and say, well, I don't have to answer for that, but you do. You know, good luck with that. We're supposed to look at someone and be like, I know you got to an answer for that. Let me help you because I want you to stand before Jesus unashamed. All right. So that is um, Galatians part, Galatians chapter six, part one. And I'll be back with part two in just a minute.